without having to actually do any science. Well, every time you whine about this, the objects are always suspiciously close, such that you can fudge the numbers, and they're always over water. So you can lie about refractive effects to people who have no idea how refraction works. So try this one on for size. Show me a picture of something over land that's a thousand miles away. May I suggest the middle of the country where there's not much in the way? It's a straight shot after all, so what's the problem? Use a telescope. Pull Las Vegas into focus from Dallas, Texas. Isn't that where you have your little meeting? Maybe you should try doing something productive rather than blindly perpetuating the dumbest hoax on the internet. Number five, speaking of things that are far away, you all love whipping out your Nikons so much that I wouldn't be surprised if a Nikon executive dreamt up the entire Flat Earth hoax as a viral marketing campaign. You take a boat that's far away, pull it back into focus, and then marvel at your own brilliance for figuring out how to operate a camera. Well, try this one then. Stay on the boat. Don't cut away. Stay on it until it disappears. How will it disappear? Bottom up just like everything else. I wonder why you've never put that on YouTube. Number six, the most hilarious thing about Flat Earth is that the most mundane everyday observations make absolutely no sense in your model. Like a sunset, a small sun above a flat Earth would simply recede high in the sky and get smaller and smaller until it fades away. It absolutely would not retain the same angular size and set below the horizon. It stays the same size because it's unbelievably far away, and it sets below the horizon because the Earth is a sphere that is turning. Even a toddler can understand this. It's so blatantly obvious that you have to resort to your typical ad hoc antics, talking about refractive effects that defy all logic, and somehow magically apply to the sun but nothing else. Or even better, some of you talk about a dome with the sun on the other side that produces some bizarre optical effect. Apart from the sheer absurdity of this magical dome that no one has ever seen or touched, it creates big problems for you because you also claim that the sun and moon perform other kinds of magic to push the air and water around, to get tides and storms and what have you. That would require that it is inside the dome. So which is it? Is the sun outside of the magical non-existent dome so you can pretend to get the sunset? Or is it inside the magical non-existent dome so you can pretend to get the tides? It can't be both. Or if you bail on the dome and say it's just water, how do all those water molecules that make up around 1% of the atmosphere produce a thousand times greater refractive effect than actual liquid water? How does the appearance of a sunset never vary at all, whether it's dry or humid or raining? Why does nothing else but the sun behave that way? Show me a projectile or a plane going below the horizon as it recedes. Or show me this dome and explain the phenomena with more than buzzwords. Do something to explain a sunset. Do anything besides making idiotic videos with action movie soundtracks that contradict middle school level science. Number seven, what the hell is a lunar eclipse to you? Seriously, explain anything about a lunar eclipse. The things you say about solar eclipses are stupid enough, but at least you say something. A lunar eclipse happens when the Earth gets between the sun and the moon. That's right, in between. These two objects are not perpetually above a flat plane, and you know it, which is why you're totally silent on lunar eclipses. And if you're going to propose that some other object besides the Earth is what obscures the moon, good luck trying to demonstrate its existence. Number eight, speaking of the sun and moon being small and close to the Earth, what is stopping you from strapping a camera to a weather balloon and sending it up there? Go get up close and personal with either of these objects and take some pictures. If you get crafty with some robotics, which is a stretch given your complete lack of education, you could even scoop up a little sample. Maybe the moon is made of cheese after all. Can't you get even halfway there such that the sizes change? Reach for the sky, fellas. Number nine, take some flights, like any direct flight in the Southern Hemisphere. Whoops, shouldn't that be impossible? Better yet, fly between two cities two different ways, the shortest way on the globe and the shortest way on the flat earth. Which one do you think will be faster? I'm just joking. I know that none of you will ever be employed long enough to afford a private jet. But next time you're on a regular plane, notice that flights going east or west are not constantly turning slightly to one side, as you seem to believe they all must be. Yeah, you would notice that. If humanity is unfortunate enough that you've actually procreated, send your kid up to the cockpit to meet the pilot and snap a pic of the wheel. 
What do you know? Straight as an arrow. And number 10, do anything legitimately scientific at all. Publish anything whatsoever about your model in anything reputable anywhere. Invent any technology based on your model. Do anything at all that could be considered actual empirical science. Here's a hint. You may have to study some real science to do it, but then of course you would immediately learn that the Earth isn't flat, so it probably won't be of much use. So that's it for the 10 challenges. I use the word challenge facetiously since all of you will immediately recognize the futility and resort instead to calling me names in the comments section. You flat earth priests with your waste of space channels know full well that doing anything even remotely empirical demolishes your hoax, which is why you stick to shouting conspiracy and very little else. And you handful of mindless followers hanging on to the only thing that makes you feel special, maybe 2020 is the year you finally get a clue and move on with your lives. There's a whole spherical world out there, a world filled with people who won't instantly mock you or be ashamed to know you. There are so many opportunities to actually be a person of even minor consequence.